So today we're officially breaking ground on the Zia Sunnyside project. You can tell we, us construction guys, like to dig when the sun is shining bright. So we got a little head start out here. Um, I'd like to welcome the mayor of the great city of Denver, Mayor Michael Hancock, Council Member Espinoza of Council District Number One, uh, Britta Fisher's here with Office of Economic Development. I don't know if there's any other council members here. Uh, welcome if you are. City and County of Denver staff members, our design, our construction team, and our on our financing team, and our investors. Uh, so today marks the start of this catalytic project here in the Sunnyside neighborhood. Uh, for those of you that weren't familiar with this site, it used to be a really underutilized junkyard. Uh, there, was a, there was a trailer that we removed, relocated, that was abandoned three or four times and it appeared back up on site here. Uh, there was also a small grow facility and it was owned by a family that started buying up the lot seven years ago. Um, and really what made this project viable was this bridge you see right here, which is RTD rail bridge, which connects the Sunnyside neighborhood now to the whole network of RTD light rail and commuter rail trails. And then also right behind us here is a bike path that was put in. And it's only a short one mile walk from this location to Union Station on this bike path. So another great, you know, forward thinking vision that the city did to connect the neighborhoods within Denver. Um, so much like this, the bridge, the Millennial Bridge that goes over uh, the train tracks that connected Union Station to Riverfront Park, and then the subsequent bridges that along 16th Street that connected the Highlands neighborhood, this bridge is gonna do the same thing. So future development will occur on this side, as well as over on the 41st side. So again, it's really these connections that make these sites possible. Um, and being on the edge of this working class neighborhood, it's been historically a working class neighborhood for Denver when there were factories located here and other businesses located here, really was important to us to take into sort of context of what we were doing on this site. You know, I, I like to quote Colin Powell, who I served under when I was in the, in the military. Two of my favorite quotes, one is, the situation always looks better in the morning. These are really tough projects to get done and you go to bed at night not knowing how you're gonna, you know, survive the next day, but the sun comes up, you get a fresh idea, and you move the ball down the field to get these projects done. The other quote I like uh, is that, a dream doesn't become a reality by magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard hard work. And it also takes vision and collaboration. So that vision for this site really started with the city and county of Denver identifying it as a potential site. And there were two guys, I don't know if they're here today, Jeff Steinberg, Jeff Romine, very actively involved early on in the project um, that you know understood the potential of this becoming a mixed income, mixed use development. Uh, to you know, provide this great new development here in Sunnyside. So, the other important aspect when you know we got together almost exactly two years ago was this can't just be another for rent sort of temporary housing in the city of Denver. There's really this growing push to add stability to the neighborhood with condos. As you know, right behind us in the Sunnyside neighborhood, there's families that have lived here for 50 plus years. Some of those homes are now functionally obsolete. The older residents that live there, you know, may not have the money to move, you know, to, to fix up their place. But now with this site, they can stay in the neighborhood and buy one, you sell their house and move into a, you know, one level living in one of our condo units. And that's really our hope. And that was the hope and vision of the city and county of Denver, right? To maintain that stability in the neighborhood. So then the collaboration started once we were sort of granted permission to get this site under under contract with the Haney family. The collaboration started working with the Sunnyside neighborhood. All of our projects, we just don't sort of blow in there, build what we want to build. We, we want to know what the residents really want. Uh, so we take a lot of time attending those neighborhood meetings. We met with Council Member Espinoza and, and his staff to get their feedback on our design as we were developing it and get their initial input. We also um, met with residents in the Sunnyside neighborhood, hung, hung out at a couple of the coffee shops, got, got their input.
put Dennis McClinn standing over here. He's been uh, sort of one of the pioneers in the neighborhood, met with him multiple times. So that collaboration then formed sort of the idea for the for the project. And one of the example of that is this is an entire city block, as you can tell. And if you drive past some big city block developments in Denver, they are big developments. And one of the goals here was to break it down into sort of manageable chunks and to bisect the site so the neighbors wouldn't have to walk you know an entire block to go through it with this really activated alley similar to dairy block in denver where there could be community events like farmers market so that was one of the one of those important early on design goals uh, that we put in place that came from actually council member espinoza um, so today we're breaking ground on a 123 million dollar project big project it has 120 for sale condo units. 25 of those condo units are permanently deed restriction, deed restricted to those families making 80% to 95% of their area median income. So that's you know in excess of what's required now by code in in the city. And then there's also going to be 314 apartment units, a lot of apartments, but 66 of those units, again, are going to be essentially permanently deed restricted for those making 80% or less. So that's, you know, somebody that's providing a lot of the vital services, school teachers, firefighters, entry level uh, workers, recent college grads can live here and be a short commute to their office in Denver. So that was, you know, and then the other part of this project for us was to not really compete with rents and for sale prices of projects in Union Station, but make the prices more attainable for a broader, you know, section of, of people. Um, so then ground level retail was another community goal, really activating this uh, RTD bridge landing here. So hopefully we can land a great breakfast place and great uh, restaurant, bar, and other community neighborhood uh, retail spaces for that. So there's about 9,000 uh, square feet of ground floor retail. Important for us is creating a sense of community within a community. Sometimes you can become anonymous on these big projects, and we like to create those areas where people can gather, foster a sense of community. So there's, um, I forget, about 20,000 square feet of sort of common area for the neighborhood and for the uh, people, the future residents here to, to gather. So this all started with a $3 million loan from the City and County of Denver through OED, Office of Economic De Development, uh, to do this project. Uh, and that was two years ago. We hadn't even put pencil to paper yet to figure out what we were going to build. We just essentially had a handshake agreement on what we would do. Um, and you know, we've worked closely with them along the way to uh, to to do that. Um, so that $3 million loan that we got from the city and county to, to buy this dirt is really leveraged into 91 desperately needed uh, workforce housing units here. So I think that's a pretty good ROI for the city and county of Denver. So appreciate you working with us. Um, several people have asked about the name Zia, where that comes from. This street that we're standing on is Inca. I don't know where the name Inca came from either. <laughs> it's Indian. Zia, it, this street, by the way, was originally called Edmund or Edmans, depending uh, which spelling the map, the cartographer put on the map originally. But, you know, it's Inca today. So we used Inca. Zia means sun or light. So we figured that this would be a simple name to highlight this landmark project for this neighborhood because we're going to bring, you know, it's on the east side. Side. It's awfully bright here in Sunnyside, <laughs> and the future is very bright. So, figured it was a great name, and apparently it is. Um, and lastly, you know, in designing the building, in collaboration with Crane Architecture, Dan Crane, hopefully he's here in the back, hiding, and his team. Uh, you know, we we wanted we felt it was important that the building has sort of this historic and authentic feel, like Lodo, and not just like a lot of other apartment buildings going up around Denver. Uh, so we took that into account, a lot of brick, a lot of metal, a lot of sort of authentic materials that you'd his historically find along a railroad track. 
um, because we wanted this building to really be a landmark building to set the, the tone, have that timeless architecture that will then catalyze other developments that happen along this uh, stretch as you then blend into the sort of lower density uh, Sunnyside neighborhood. <coughs> And then lastly, I'd like to thank the large group. Again, two years in the making. It takes a lot of people, a lot of resources, huge team to make this project happen. Dan Crane, I mentioned, he uh, runs Crane Architecture. We've been doing projects together for the last 12 years. HKS is our civil engineering led by John O'Rourke. I saw Joe Rapp here, our structural engineer. Had to go through a lot, jump through a lot of hoops on some redesigns we made. Our MET, MEP, Mechanical Electrical Plumbing team is Given, Trevor, Kevin, John, our interior designer, see Grady back there bringing the character to the building. Uh, CBRE ranged our financing. Uh, Fortress, which is a large um, private equity group out of Denver, this is their first major investment in Colorado, so they're providing the financing on the project. You know, my fellow trusted partners, Tony DeSimone and, and Matt McBride, collaborate on all our projects, and then our investors, the Anderson family, they're in the back, and the Porterfields, they've been with us every step of the way, and they actually have very deep Denver roots, uh, <laughs> literally, <laughs> from, their, from their former uh, father's thing. So, anyways, to commemorate the groundbreaking, I'm gonna turn it over to Mayor Hancock here in a second. We have gift bags. It's a really hot day. Everybody needs to stay hydrated. So there's a nice little water bottle with the logo. Spread the word. We've got 120 condo units for sale. So grab one on, <laughs> grab one on your way out. And then, and then we have a we have a keychain. If I can get out of the wrapper, and the keychain. Keychain has our logo again. We gotta always be Brandon. Um, bottle opener. We live in the beer capital, and then uh, a light because the future is bright and sunny side. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mayor Hancock. Thank you, sir. You're back. Thank you, Tim, and thank you, Confluence Builders. What a sunny, hot day in Denver and in Sunnyside. Let, let me tell you something about this, these groundbreakings that we've been doing. They're either too hot or too cold. Either way, the mayor gets the message, make your speech short. Um, the last, last groundbreaking we did, it was so cold, I just got up and said, listen, thank you all for being here. Let's break this ground and go home. It's too cold out here. We won't be too far behind that. And your timing is absolutely impeccable, not only for this project, Project, uh, but for the fact you're giving me a hydro flask, yeah. true story. My daughter texts me 30 minutes ago, asked me to go on Amazon and order her a hydro flask. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you this a true story. She sent me a picture and everything. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, it just so happened to have confluence on Janae. Look at this. I will get it up to Fort Collins and see issue where she is. Uh, listen, we, we are excited to be here. I want to join uh, in, in congratulating Tim and Confluence Builders. I want to thank Bretta Fisher, who's here from Economic Development. She is our Housing Services Director. Uh, and I want to thank uh, the councilman for leaning in on this project because it's it's been a full partnership in making this happen. It's amazing that uh, they probably shouldn't have invited me. He said we gave $3 million for the dirt and I show up and the dirt's gone. <laughs> Where's my money, man? What you do with my money? <laughs> But uh, we, we are proud to be a partner uh, in, the, in this project. And I got to tell you, uh, I want to say two things about this, and then really I'm going to be done. Really three things. One is condos are back in Denver, Colorado, y'all. 120 condos as part of this project. That's worth celebrating. 120 condos as part of this project. Two, 20% uh, of this great, wonderful development is uh, designed for affordability. And we want to thank you for that because we can, we can make a difference in the lives of community folks who live in this community. Hopefully for some of the folks who live here maybe aging out, maybe looking to downsize and get into a more stable, secure housing. This is a great opportunity for that. And finally, let me say this. When you think about the opportunities that Denver has going forward with affordable housing and creating great development, right here, this project, Zia project, will really serve as the great model. Because I've always said RTODs, better 
better said TOCs, transit oriented communities, are the greatest opportunity we have to create density, create a level playing field for those who are most vulnerable in our city in terms of economics, uh, to create affordable housing, market rate housing or mixed housing, good retail and services that provide that are provided for the folks who live here and live and play around here, but also access to good transit. This is the model that I'm talking about. And so I'm doubly proud to be here, triply proud with the, with the hydro flask. Um, you just saved me some money, man, personally. I appreciate it. Um, to be here to celebrate this project because you are the model that we're yearning for. You are the model that we're pushing to go toward at these transit-oriented development sites uh, going forward. So thank you uh, for showing us how we can get this done. And so I congratulate you. I'm proud to be a partner of, uh, on it. And with that, I want to bring up here into the sun a uh, hardworking councilman, uh, the Honorable Rafael Espinoza. Thank you, Mayor. You bet. So I'm, I'm glad that they covered all of that because that's all very important and useful information. Um, from my standpoint, when I took office uh, three years ago and I was looking at all the issues, it, both having gone door to door and just looking at it from the, the perspective of the council office, seeing the station area plan and what it had proposed for, I mean, what it was planning for this area, I thought, damn, this area is in the crosshairs. And given this sort of nature of development that had occurred, um, both good and bad in Northwest Denver, it was unclear what sort of outcomes we would get up here. So when the administration told me that they were investing in this land, I, that was music to my ears. And the reason was is because uh, unlike a private development, because of the city's involvement, I knew that we might be able to sort of have, uh, be able to leverage that position to actually get, drive the outcomes that are, I, I think, are most conducive to catalyzing, as the word Tim used, catalyzing the nature of development that occurs here. And uh, so that was a wonderful conversation, really receptive uh, development team, Dan Crane, uh, fantastic job, every iteration that came through the office. Um, and and so that's what was fun is what one of our problems at our station areas is uh, you come into a desolate place whether it's a surface parking lot or a parking structure and if you work late hours it's abandoned and it's not a place where you feel safe and that's a concern with a bridge this long and this uh, and this isolated and so working with the team we basically you'll see it on the cover we focused on two things uh, a, a vertical activation uh, around here so we had eyes on that L, on that on that bridge and then activation along the street front here because there's a huge you can't see it behind this this uh, this the screen, but there's a wonderful path that goes all the way downtown, uh, right here, eight foot wide the whole way along a river. And uh, to so have activation here, incredible views of downtown, it just made a ton of sense and I'm glad that this design team recognized that and, 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 and captured that. Then to the point about the connection through the, through the property, what we're trying to do is emphasize east-west connections, um, which is something we sort of de-emphasize because those are the short ends of our blocks. But emphasize these east-west connections to get people from Sunnyside over to this station area and start activating and utilizing this area. So that was all that's all in this project and that will inform uh, the things that we do going forward and it already has you know, on subsequent rezonings. So I want to thank uh, Tim, Confluence, everybody here now that I know that everybody here basically has a role in that um, just thank you all um, because this project is so very well received in this neighborhood. It it comes up time and time again at my community meetings as that's something we're proud of. And so it's, it's, it's heartening for me to be able to be here. Amanda, I'm seeing you here. She was part of, she's, she's my right hand person in my office and was part of all these negotiations and making sure that that voice of the community, sort of the old school, was still present through all these conversations. So that said, I just want to thank you all for, for bringing this to Northwest Denver and District 1. Thank you. Thank you.